city of Salisbury is undergoing what its mayor described as quite fantastic growth. But the growth of the Federation's capital is a reality. Its traffic is increasing, its population is increasing, and building operations are spreading residential and industrial suburbs far beyond the old boundaries. Salisbury is already generating half as much power as the city of Durban and expects to generate as much by 1958. Its older buildings are rapidly being overshadowed by modern structures that give Salisbury a new skyline. It is for all the world as if human enterprise and human endeavour have taken a new lease on life and Salisbury is moving headlong into a new future. For mirrored here are the hopes and fulfilment of the Federation and the brave plans and confidence that Federation has unleashed throughout the Federal Territories. A new look, a new era, a new energy. These things are turning the eyes of the world towards the Rhodesias and would delight the great visionary who first said, look to the north. Visiting Commonwealth parliamentary delegates arrive at Livingston and it isn't long before they're on their way to see the spectacle that held David Livingston spellbound. Small wonder that Livingston, inspired by the majesty of the Victoria Falls, named them after his queen. The parliamentarians entered a launch that took them up the Zambezi. The Zambezi. Somehow it epitomizes Africa in all its wildness. And there is still wildness in Africa, even if at times it does forget to be wild. Another visitor to Livingston was Sir Godfrey Huggins, the Federal Prime Minister. He was welcomed by the Mayor of Livingston, Mr H. Tom. It was a decided come down for the PM when he descended the gorge in a trolley to visit the hydroelectric power station at the Silent Pool. It's probably true to say that this is where hydroelectric power engineering was pioneered in Africa. And though its grandiose early plans were never fulfilled, this power station is the forerunner of many successful attempts to harness the waters of Africa to man's use. And hydroelectric power has a big part to play in Africa's development. Sir Godfrey Huggins took a launch trip up the Zambezi and this was closely connected with Sir Godfrey's visit. The Victoria Falls and the Zambezi are among the greatest natural tourist attractions in the world. And near to this attraction, in fact only eight miles away in Livingston, he opened what is to be the Federation's focal point of tourism. These animals on Pew Pew Prison Farm near Zomba are to play a vital part in protecting Central Africa from smallpox, but they will not suffer themselves. They are taken to the government pathologist's surgery where part of their skin is shaved and cleansed. Still used today is Edward Jenner's discovery that cowpox vaccine protects humans against smallpox, so cows are still infected. Don't talk to us about Jenner. Cowpox is not a serious disease in cows, and when they return to their pastures, they are immune to the disease and suffer no ill effects from their inoculation. The lymph or pulp they produce is purified in the laboratories, and samples are planted onto agar agar and other substances to grow into cultures. Only one kind of bacillus is wanted for the vaccine must be absolutely pure to be safe. Eventually, the finished vaccine is drawn off in liquid form. The vaccine is mixed with lanolin and put into small tubes. Each tube, incidentally, contains enough for 200 vaccinations, which, when you come to think of it, is a powerful lot of protection packed into a very small package. The tubes are sealed and dipped into hot wax, then cold water, as a further protection. Vaccine can be stored in a deep freeze indefinitely. And having put the cars and everybody to so much trouble, what happens to the vaccine? Well, you should know by now that it goes into people. Yes, people in hospitals and clinics and schools 
not only in Nyasaland, but as far south as southern Rhodesia, get protection from the vaccine produced at Zumba. And not only people who live in towns, for if they don't go to clinics, the vaccine comes to them. Smallpox could flare up anywhere at any time, leaving death in its wake were it not for the simple weapon that Edward Jenner placed in the hands of medical science. The bridges are built and the route is prepared that will extend the Rhodesian railway system 200 miles beyond Bannockburn to join up with Mozambique railways. Rhodesia railways have already laid 50 miles of track using methods they have evolved themselves to save time and labor. In the first operation at the depot, 16 steel sleepers are assembled on a jig. Nothing could be simpler. Then the crane lifts the rails into place on the sleepers and they are bolted up. As each rail weighs half a ton, you can imagine the manhandling already saved. So now a whole section of rails and sleepers is ready to go to the end of the line. Six sections are loaded one on top of another onto a flat car each resting on small wheels. Each flat car carries 80 yards of line and with 11 cars to a train, half a mile is sent up at a time. At the end of the line is a laying crane onto which the rails are slid from the flat cars. This ingenious affair lifts the top rail section from the pile, hoists it out and travels forward over the last rail it has laid. Now the whole section is added to the line complete in very much the same way as the lines are assembled for a kid's model train. So the line is pushed ahead by 40 feet leaps and bounds. And even in the final placing, the man handling is negligible. Once in place, all that remains is to bolt them together. It's simplicity itself, but not to some people. This method is so fast that the link up should be operating next year. One thing still necessary to complete each operation is the quarrying, transporting and strengthening of the line with granite ballast. Quarried as near as possible to the scene of operations, the ballast is taken forward by the truckload and tipped off beside the line. The sleepers are then jacked up, as you would a motor car with a puncture, and the ballast is spread underneath. Both Rhodesia and Mozambique railways have about the same amount to build. And by 1955, Rhodesia will have its vital link with Lorenzo Marx.